Let's get straight to the point. Number eight, the light bulb conspiracy that left us in the dark. Let's kick this off with the grandfather of all engineering scams, the humble light bulb. You've probably changed three of these in your kitchen this year alone, wondering why they pop the moment you flip the switch. It wasn't always like this. In a fire station in Livermore, California, there is a bulb called the Centennial Light that has been burning almost continuously since 1901. That is over a million hours of illumination. So why did we devolve? Enter the Phoebus Cartel. In the 1920s, the world's biggest bulb manufacturers, including GE and Philips, held a supervillain meeting in Geneva. They realized that if bulbs never burned out, nobody would buy new ones. So they capped the lifespan at exactly 1,000 hours. They actually hired engineers to make the filaments weaker. Think about that. Some brilliant scientist spent his career figuring out how to make a product worse just to squeeze an extra dollar out of your wallet. It is the literal definition of they don't make them like they used to because they are technically forbidden to do so. Number seven, the indestructible stockings that vanished. If you wear tights or know anyone who does, you are familiar with the sheer panic of seeing a run appear before you've even left the house. It feels like they tear if you look at them too hard. But back in the 1940s, DuPont released the first nylon stockings, and they were essentially bulletproof. The original marketing claimed they were strong as steel, and for once, the advertising wasn't lying. Early prototypes were so durable, you could practically use them as tow ropes. But here is the problem that keeps CEOs awake at night. Once every woman in America bought a pair, DuPont sales flatlined. Why buy a second pair if the first one survives nuclear fallout? The executives panicked and ordered their chemists to go back to the lab, not to improve the product, but to break it. They tweaked the chemical formula to make the fibers more fragile to UV light and friction. So every time you get a ladder on your tights, remember, you aren't clumsy. You are the victim of chemical sabotage designed to keep a subscription model on your legs. Number six, the battery trap you can't escape. Let's talk about the glowing rectangle you're probably staring at right now. You treat your smartphone like a newborn baby. Expensive cases, tempered glass protectors, keeping it safe. Yet like clockwork, two years pass, and suddenly your lightning-fast device starts moving like it's wading through molasses. It shuts down at 30% battery, and apps crash for no reason. Is it just old age? Please, that is software sabotage. Remember the battery gate scandal? Apple literally admitted to throttling older iPhones via software updates. But the real crime is the hardware design itself. Remember when you could pop the back off your Nokia and swap the battery for 10 bucks? Good luck doing that now without a heat gun, specialized screwdrivers, and the steady hands of a neurosurgeon. By gluing the battery inside a sealed glass sandwich, manufacturers have ensured that when the lithium-ion chemistry inevitably degrades, it is easier to just drop $1,000 on a new phone than to try and fix the old one. It isn't sleek design, it is a literal expiration date with a touchscreen. Number 5. The Printer Ink Extortion Racket Let's talk about the absolute worst piece of technology in your house, the printer. It is the only device that actually seems to sense fear. You buy a printer for $40, which seems like a steal, until you realize you've signed a deal with the devil. The liquid inside those cartridges is statistically more expensive per gallon than vintage champagne or even human blood, seriously. But the real scam is the empty notification. You know when it stops printing black text because it's supposedly low on cyan? That's annoying, but it gets darker. Most cartridges have a microchip that counts the pages you print. Once you hit a specific number, the chip tells the printer the ink is gone even if the cartridge is actually half full of liquid. You are throwing away usable product because a chip lied to you. Many printers also have a hidden kill switch called a waste ink pad counter. After a set number of cycles, the printer simply bricks itself with a vague error message, forcing you to trash a functional machine. 
It is extortion, pure and simple. Number four, the fast fashion fabric scam. Now let's look at your closet. Have you ever bought a trendy shirt, worn it once to a party, washed it and pulled out something that looks like it was chewed on by a rabid raccoon? That isn't you being bad at laundry, that is the insidious design of fast fashion. Back in the day, people bought clothes to last a decade. Today, brands operate on a system of 52 micro-seasons a year, instead of just four. To keep up with this insane speed, they stopped making clothes out of durable cotton and started weaving them out of what is essentially solidified oil and sadness. They use short staple cotton and low-grade synthetics that are biologically programmed to pill, stretch, and lose their shape after a few spin cycles. It is a brilliant economic trap. They make the clothing so cheap that repairing a loose button or a small tear feels like a waste of time. Why fix it when a new one is five bucks? They have successfully brainwashed us into treating clothing like disposable napkins. You aren't buying an outfit, you are renting a look for the weekend before it disintegrates into landfill fodder, forcing you right back into the checkout line. Number three, the smart appliance trap. Let's head to the kitchen. If you go to your grandma's house, she probably has a refrigerator from the Cold War era. It hums like a tractor and is ugly as sin, but it will probably outlive us all. Now look at your stainless steel smart fridge with the Wi-Fi touchscreen. It can tweet, check the weather, and play Spotify, but statistically, it will be dead in five to seven years. This is the great appliance downgrade. Old machines relied on mechanical timers and heavy-duty gears, simple, clunky, and basically unkillable. Modern appliances are stuffed with cheap, delicate circuit boards that are often placed right next to heat sources or vibrating motors. It is engineering suicide. Take washing machines. Manufacturers used to bolt the drum together so you could replace the bearings for 20 bucks. Now, they mold the plastic drum as a sealed unit. If a tiny $10 bearing wears out, you can't fix it. You have to replace the entire tub assembly, which costs more than buying a brand new machine. They sell you innovation, but they are really selling you a disposable computer that just happens to wash your socks until its motherboard inevitably fries from the humidity. Number two, the video game controller conspiracy. Let's talk about the absolute rage inducer known as stick drift. You are in the final circle of a battle royale, about to take the winning shot, and suddenly your character looks at the sky and spins in circles like a confused ballerina. You didn't touch the stick. Your controller is haunted, or rather, it's engineered to die. Inside almost every modern controller, whether it's Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo, is a joystick mechanism that relies on physical wipers rubbing against carbon tracks. It is literally friction-based technology. It is guaranteed to wear down, usually right after your warranty expires. But here is the kicker. We solved this problem decades ago. In the late 90s, Sega used Hall Effect sensors in their Dreamcast controllers. They use magnets to detect movement, meaning no physical contact and zero wear. They are virtually immortal. So why did the big three gaming giants ignore this immortal tech for 20 years? Because a $70 controller that lasts forever is bad for business. They would rather you rage quit and drive to the store to buy another plastic paperweight every six months. Number one, the right to repair rebellion. All of these examples lead to one terrifying conclusion. You don't actually own anything anymore. You are just indefinitely renting the privilege of using plastic junk until the corporate overlords decide it's time for an upgrade. This brings us to the final boss fight, the right to repair. Companies like John Deere and Apple have spent millions lobbying governments to make it illegal for you to fix your own property. They treat repair manuals like classified nuclear secrets and use proprietary screws that look like alien hieroglyphics. Why? Because an independent repair shop is a leak in their money pipeline. But the tide is turning. People are waking up to the fact that sustainable marketing is a total lie if the product ends up in a landfill in 18 months. 
So, the next time your toaster explodes or your phone slows go a crawl, don't just mindlessly swipe your credit card for a replacement. Get angry. Support right to repair legislation. Learn how to use a screwdriver. Because the only thing that should be obsolete is the idea that we have to put up with this garbage. Stay curious, stay skeptical, and try not to break anything on your way out. If you like the video, hit that like button before your screen decides to glitch out for no reason, share this with a friend who is currently yelling at their printer, and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into the madness of modern life. Stay chill, and I'll see you in the next one.